CBS News Director of Elections and Surveys, Anthony Salvanto, is here to break this race down. Anthony, welcome. How are you? So, it's so fascinating to watch what's happened here over the last 24 hours. The Republican frontrunner, Greg Gianforte, was charged with misdemeanor assault after he was accused of body slamming a reporter. But the real question from your perspective, is there any sense that that can alter the dynamic of the race at this point? Well, the first thing to know about Montana is that most people vote early. Mm -hmm. So it's a heavily mail ballot, absentee ballot state. Usually about 60 or 65 percent of people. So those ballots, they're in the mail. Some of them have still yet to be dropped off and can be dropped off today. But that means everything before this last minute incident is kind of baked in. Yeah. What the wild card here is going to be tonight is for all the folks who would not have ordinarily voted in this race, and that could be another 100,000 people or so, are they now motivated to come out? And then you have to ask yourself, well, which side are they motivated to come out on? So there's a number of wild cards here, but that's really the dynamic. It's whether people then are motivated that they wouldn't have otherwise come out because we've already seen so many of the ballots in the mail. And Anthony, what do you tell us about each of these candidates? They don't come from sort of traditional political backgrounds. No, but it's Montana and it's a special <laughs> election. So this is the kind of thing that, that we see. You know, this is one of the states where there's a statewide single congressional district. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's because states are given congressional districts based on how much population they have. Montana has the one. So it's another statewide office. What that does is it means that like the governor's race or like the Senate race, these candidates can come from anywhere in the state and then they can, they have to travel all over the state kind of making their case. And look, it's been a case where both of them have not necessarily run in accordance with what their parties have wanted them to, but on the other hand, a certain amount of independence is always kind of welcome sometimes in these special elections. Do we know if either of them uh, bear any kind of similarity to Ryan Zinke at all in terms of policy? Do we have a sense of that? I mean, what is it that voters there in Montana are looking for? Do we know? I think the thing to watch here is to the extent that people will call this special uh, yet another referendum mm -hmm. on what's going on in the country, what's going on with, with the president, um, the degree to which that is reflected in the vote. So if you see a race where it is much closer than typical, so a Republican would typically be expected to win this seat. If it's closer than typical, what happens after the race is everybody jumps in and says, oh, well, this must mean Democrats are excited. This must mean that people don't want or people may want a check on President Trump. And the reverse will be how people read it if the Republican wins by a comfortable margin. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, oh, Montana sent somebody to go work with President Trump. That means his base is still intact. Now, Will that be overplaying it to some degree? Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's just one race. Mm -hmm. But that's how the political world will react to So this. it's like a Rorschach test. Basically, whatever happens, you can read it any way you want, depending on where you're sitting from. Right, and <laughs> because it's the only game in town. Right. And we'll do this again in, you know, in other <laughs> states. We'll do this again right. in Georgia to some degree. Oh, this is a litmus test. When it's the only game in town, you know, we political junkies tend to all sort of look at it really hard. Right. Um, they don't necessarily predict things, but for the, the donors and for the politicos who are going to look for some data, this provides some data. All right, Anthony Salvanto, thank you so much. Thank you.